on today's show. We continue to completely overreact by playing it's just one game, but... Anthony Davis is the MVP. The Knicks are making the playoffs. Towns needs Butler out of Minnesota now. And we debate which All-Star had the better debut, Kawhi in Toronto or Damar in San Antonio. It's Thursday, October 18th. The starter starts now. Evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters. I'm Skeets, he's Tess, that's the Aussie, Lee Ellis, and over yonder, that's the bearded one, Trey Kirby. Hey, yo! Hey, hey yo. yo! TK, what's poppin', man? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters, and you might not have noticed if you weren't paying close attention, but Drew Holiday took the court for the Pelicans last night, rocking a new style of NBA headband that's a little bit like a Karate Kid headband, a little bit like a bandana, definitely something you don't see on the NBA court very often. This is no. next level headwear, and it brings us to today's question. What is some other next level headwear you would like to see in the NBA? For instance, if you play on the Philadelphia 76ers, you should be able to wear a tricorn cap. You should just be able to, it's called history. Also, if you have a flat top, you should be able to wear a top hat. It's not that much different. And of course, everybody looks good in a beret. <laughs> That's true. So let's make sure to get those in the mix as well. But wait, we wait. wanna hear from you. So let us know on Twitter, what other next level NBA headwear would you like to see? Send us your best tweets to hashtag the starters and we'll hear from you later. All right, get those tweets in. Fun show tonight. We have the triumphant return of the meme team. We're gonna play a little what you got. We got Lily's very solid play. But first, 22 teams made their NBA season debut last night. So you know what that means, we're running back. It's just one game but where we completely overreact after 48 minutes of basketball. TK, take it away. While I was putting together a birthday dress up box, Anthony Davis was putting together a monster line. 32 points, 16 rebounds, three blocks, three steals, and a career high eight assists in a blowout win against the Rockets. I don't even think this is an overreaction. <laughs> it's just one game, but Anthony Davis is the MVP. I'm with you. All I, right, I don't next question. Yeah, I don't think it's an overreaction whatsoever. I think he's just all grown up. I think going into year seven here of his career, he's going to be 26 very soon. I, I just think this is the best version of Anthony Davis. And there's lots of stories about last year when DeMarcus Cousins went out and Anthony Davis wasn't himself. He wasn't leading the team. The story was DeMarcus Cousins gave him a call and said, Anthony Davis, we need you to be Anthony Davis. Or right. The other story is Alvin Gentry said, just be loose out there. You're being tight. <laughs> Whatever the story is, I think we're just getting the best version of Anthony Davis. Just, I, I think you look back at the numbers last year and you say, well, how much better can he get? I, I think the sustained effort, just leading his team, the leadership is going to be there night in and night out in year seven of his career here because this was a win that you probably wouldn't have seen last year you right. know, with this Pelicans team. The, the Rockets would have came back. I think it's just growing up and being the best version. He's entering his prime. Yeah, and, and it, it comes down th to. that's exactly what it comes down to, and that's why we're going to see his best year. He dominated without dominating the ball because he had 21 shots, but Miritich had 20. And at both ends of the floor, he was just unstoppable. Clint Capello, we know he's a very good defender. He really couldn't do anything to stop Davis last night. And I think that is the biggest sign of his growth, knowing that pretty much, I mean, maybe someone like a Rudy Gobert who's got that length can, can sort of contain Davis and cause him trouble. But other than that, he can rise up over guys when he needs to. Also, he's got a very underrated handle because he used to be a point guard. He went through that growth spurt yeah. and he was. So he was a good ball handler. And you can see when he's out there, he's confident dribbling the ball, knowing that if the double comes, he can make a pretty confident pass or he can just take on his opponent. So, yeah, not an overreaction. We, a couple of us picked him to win MVP. For, and a lot of people did. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, and he's like second favourite, I think, after LeBron. So right. it's not a huge surprise there. But uh, feeling pretty good after seeing that one performance. I'm just happy we got this in game one because there were two narratives. There were always going to be two narratives when you came into this Pelican season with Anthony Davis. One was he balls out like he did at the end of last season and into the playoffs. Maybe his team wins 50-plus games. Everybody's feeling great about the Pelicans. You know, they could maybe challenge to go deep in the playoffs. That's fine. Or the other narrative was going to be AD balls out like he normally does and he doesn't get any help mm -hmm. from maybe any of his Pelicans guys and they struggle and they're a 500 team and then what we, what we would hear would just be trade Anthony Davis, save Anthony Davis, get him to the Celtics, get him to whoever. That's what the narrative will be if they struggle. So it was nice to see that it wasn't just Anthony Davis killing it last night. It was Miritich. It was Randall. It was Peyton with the triple-double. Yeah. It was Moore who scored 21. I mean, Drew Holiday, Kung Fu Drew was the sixth best player on the Pelicans last night, yeah. which is amazing. So I'm, I'm so happy that we made, you know, 
we're always going to hear the like, who could go get AD and is he happy there and all that. We're always going to hear it. I get it. But it tempers those sort of headlines. It tempers that conversation if they're good. And really what it comes down to is he's going to be good. Who can help him? So I was happy that happened. Doesn't it feel like for the first time in his career, though, he's got a leadership role and this, his team has an identity behind him? It, it didn't feel like that the first six years. Now we know what this team is because it was, well, maybe we go Twin Towers with DeMarcus Cousins. Maybe the, that was yeah. the best version of them. But now we know it's AD, lots of floor space, and get shooters around him and make it happen. And you mentioned all those guys, Alfred Payton, who had a triple-double, yeah. and Nikola Mirotic. This team sort of has like a Mike D'Antoni vibe to it right now where Alvin Gentry might be getting the most out of guys, like role players like that, just getting them confident in themselves. And that's exactly what that storyline was that I mentioned earlier was, yeah. hey, AD, just be you, just be confident. And Alvin Gentry, you know, was part of the sort of the Mike D'Antoni coaching tree. They coached together once upon a time. Those guys just look like, you know, you might see an Alfred Payton career year. Yeah, possibly. But look, he can put up 30s and 15s all he wants. If they don't win mm. the Pelicans, you know, around 50 games, then he's not going to win MVP. Very unlikely. Uh, you know, very, very unlikely. He needs wins to go with these awesome stats. 100%. So but, start. yeah, that's why it feels different, right? Yeah. All right, next one, Trey. All right, after a month of trade request drama, the Timberwolves started their season with Jimmy Butler still in tow. And while Butler went for 23 and hit a clutch three late in the fourth, Carl Anthony Towns did not fare so well, scoring just eight on six shots before fouling out. Yikes. It's just one game. But Towns needs Butler traded ASAP. Oh. Get him out of here. Yes, he does. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns, we really wanted to see a response from him last night. Aggression, just playing. Well, he was conflict. aggressive. He <laughs> fouled out in yeah, 22 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah but uh, Jimmy Butler, of course, he, he didn't look super great last night. Hit a big shot at the end. But also, you could you just tell from Jimmy Butler saying, I'm not waiting around for these other guys. I'm going to go out there and take control. Andrew Wiggins was okay, but Towns is the one that we really needed to see step up and go against LaMarcus Aldridge. Maybe use that body that he said he's been working on in the summer to get a bit stronger, but it just wasn't there. I, I don't so know. you think is the that, answer, though, is to ship Jimmy Butler well, out and maybe I, I, then say, Towns, here you go, this is your team? I mean, I've said they, they should move yeah. on from Jimmy Butler, so I'm not going to change my tone from that. But if you are Tibbs and you are the Timberwolves, Jimmy Butler's like, listen, while I'm here, I'm going to showcase all my skills and talents, and I don't really care what he's going to do. Towns would tell you that his body's feeling good. He had yeah. lots of offensive fouls yesterday because he's strong, <laughs> yeah. and that's what happened. That's what he joked about after the game. But I am extremely worried. You mentioned you want Towns sort of aggressive. There's a guy who's aggressive in that locker room, who's a confrontational guy. It's Jimmy Butler, and mm. he said, I love confrontation. Carl Anthony Towns looks like he likes the opposite. Like, he doesn't like this whatsoever, and I wonder if it's just going to wear on him because at the beginning of the game, he comes out and he allows Jakob Pertl, yuck, 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 to get an offensive rebound around yeah. him, yeah. and it just was downhill from there. I don't like the foul trouble as an excuse for having a bad game. He just wasn't there mentally, and I just wonder if the relationship... It's just not going to work. Is it irreparable? Maybe the Ooh. the personalities don't work. Yeah, look, he's looking like a strong yeah. guy. He's looking pretty tough right there. Uh, I, I just didn't think the focus was there. And I just wonder how that wears on a guy. I don't think this is a Kevin Garnett situation, you know, mm -hmm. quite yet, where he just has year after year after year of not working out. But if this goes on for a long time, where does Cat go from there? Yeah. I just wonder how long you can let this happen. What's funny to me about last night's game and the loss of the Spurs, amidst all this talk of, like, whose team is this? Who's the alpha dog? Down the stretch, it was Derrick Rose, a 30-year-old point guard, who was at that point, you know, 3 for 11, mm. taking the final shot. Isn't that sort of strange? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just odd to me. It's, again, like, whose team is it? Is it Towns? Is it Butler? Oh, Wiggins can score. And here we have Rose, who finishes 3 for 12, and he tries to take this... You know, very tough shot. It doesn't even come close to it. It's just, but that's just, a lack of, that's a there, lack of right? leadership I mean, within the team. I know. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, this is my point. Yeah. Isn't it exactly like Jimmy Butler's bull situation? There's two factions in the locker room. There's the old right. guard and the new guard. And Derek Rose, Taj Gibson, they're on Jimmy Butler's side. It, yeah. it sure feels that way. Although, you know, you look at it, big picture, it was a four-point loss in San Antonio. Yeah. That, that always happens. Yeah. But it did not feel right. All right, next one, Trey. Despite being pegged as one of the worst teams in the league, the Knicks last night handled another of the worst teams. The Hawks, <laughs> no problem. At one point, going up 28 in a blowout opening night win. Guys, the Knicks are back! I'm overreacting here, forget about it! <laughs> it's just one game, but the Knicks are making the playoffs, baby! It, Madison right. Square Garden's a rock and forget it, about it! Yeah, if the NBA <laughs> schedule makers step in here and uh, make the Knicks play the Hawks every night, every <laughs> second night, maybe it's in play then. I mean, let's not go crazy here as the Hawks. But I like the defensive uh, tenacity 
from this new coached Fisdale team. I love that they put Frankie Smokes into the starting lineup. Yep. We thought it might be Knox, but they went with the defense. And you're sticking and with Frankie the Frankie Smokes. Smokes Frankie Smokes, Smokes it is, my man. <laughs> wow. And but and look, he didn't light it up the box score offensively. That's not what he's in there for. Deflections, some steals, some rebounds, had a nice block. He was great. There was I, I liked what I saw. And Tim Hardaway Jr., he's going for 50 this year in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I'm sticking with this prediction. He had another hot start, 22, yeah. cooled off, only finished with 31. Why does he do that? Why can't he get I over don't the know. hump there? I don't know. I mean, he's like, going to have one of these games where he hits a ton of threes yeah. and he's going to get to the 50. But uh, look, this is a good start for the Knicks. <laughs> Obviously, no poor Zingas. But some of these young guys, even Knox coming in off the bench, mm -hmm. good, good solid starts. Yeah. And defensively, they were locked <laughs> in. Nobody just, wants to jump to conclusions. It just helps they're playing the Hawks. It's just one, one game, but teams. Trey's got the best New York accent in this studio. I'm surprised because I thought it was cameraman Rick over yeah. there. It's shocking. Can you say, can you say I'm walking here? in a I'm walking! <laughs> yeah, all right. I've uh, never been to New York. That, Is that what yeah. they say? I think so. I think they so. Said Forget it. about it. Yeah, there you go. Forget about it. All right, well, let's we'll get to take a break. Lots more still to come on the starters tonight. We've got the meme team, and when we come back, who had the better night? Kawhi on the Raptors or DeRozan on the Spurs? Still sounds weird to say both of those things out loud. Back in a second. Back with the starters playing a little what you got. We're going to debate some NBA questions that Trey's going to throw at us. Ultimately decide on an answer, but you got to be careful because there's only one correct response, and that's whatever TK says it is. Trey. Kawhi Leonard and DeMar DeRozan got life swapped over the summer, and last night they both made their debuts. Leonard put up 24 points and 13 rebounds and a W for the Raptors, while his trade mate DeRozan went for 28, 4-4, four and, four and a win for the Spurs. But guys, who had the better debut? Kawhi or DeRozan? What you got? They both had great debuts. <laughs> what, what do I have to pick both? between my two sons? They were fantastic. Yeah. I think DeMar's was a little bit more steady. It was smoother. The 28-4-4 four four. Kawhi was, uh, he wasn't great to start the game. No. The ball was sticking a little bit. Hey, they, it sticks with both these guys. But DeMar had to close out the game as well. The Raptors sort of was a blowout. DeMar finished the job yep. going into Jimmy Butler's chest and hitting that game-winning shot. So I'll give it to DeMar. They both look fantastic. Everything is great. It's a trade that both teams won. Was it weird to see them, both of these guys, Kawhi in a Raptors uniform and DeRozan in a Spurs uniform? It was just strange. The thing about it for me was both of them looked very, very comfortable in their uniform straight away. DeRozan looks like a Spurs player than he's been one for his whole career. You know, that mid-range game, he didn't change a whole lot around of what he did. And closing out the game, a layup, a banker, and then a couple of free throws. Yeah, That's just no. perfect. That's exactly what the Spurs won. And against a, a, an opponent that was, you know, there's a little bit of chaos, of course, there in Minnesota, but DeRozan just slotted right in there perfectly, so it was beautiful. I, I think DeRozan is already the Spurs' best playmaker. I, I, it's something that you usually don't talk about with DeRozan. He, yeah. You know, racking up assists and moving the ball, but he started to get better and better at that as his career went on. He is the Spurs' best player right now. With as all it their is. point guards out, for there's sure. There's a lot of point guards missing is what I'm getting at, for sure. I thought also Kawhi... Oddly, in his Raptors debut, had a had a DeRozan-like game. If, if what I'm getting at here is, you know, scored the the 24 points, but it took him 22 shots and mm -hmm. 27 possessions. You know, so not particularly efficient. Uh, nope. But again, you know, they got the win. That's really all that matters. And, and, and overall, as a team, both squads look pretty good, especially the Spurs with all of their injuries. So it is a tough one, but I lean towards DeRozan with San Antonio. But Trey, you're the only one with the answer. Oh, it's got to be Kawhi Leonard, guys. He beat the Cavs. I heard that was impossible. Oh, hey, 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 dig. Well, nice dig. Hey, hey, hey. Anyways, a whole grip of rookies made their debuts last night. A couple of things stood out. DeAndre Ayton looked like a number one pick, posting 18 points, 10 boards, and 6 assists, and a win. While Mo Bamba, Bamba put up 13-7 and seven with two blocks and a magic win. Guys who had the better rookie performance, Ayton or Bamba? What you got? What you got? It's got to be DeAndre Ayton. Has I mean, fantastic start. Double-double. Uh, zero turnovers and only two fouls in 36 minutes. And his team got the win. He went to work straight away as well. They, the Suns threw the ball into him. He went at Doncic for his first basket. And he just looked comfortable out there. Hit a couple of mid-ranges as well. Defensively, he needs a little bit of work. He needs a lot yeah, of work. But they, listen, needs, that's I mean, why he only had two fouls, because yeah. he didn't rotate a whole lot. That's okay. okay. It's that's game that's one. It's I'm game just, one. If, if, if we talked about it. If he can average what he put up last night, the Suns will be thrilled with that throughout for the sure. season. Yeah, and he had six assists. I'm sure there was a lot of cheapy assists. One pass. They were on fire three. from three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm sure that came into it. But still, the, that, that works out yeah. pretty, pretty well. It, it's definitely DeAndre Ayton. It has to be DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, I mean, look, there was like something like 31... Uh, newcomers, rookies playing last night. Only five guys scored more than 10 points, mm. right? You had these two guys, you had Trey Young, you had Shea Gilders Alexander, and then you had an undrafted rookie on the Knicks in Alonzo Trier. So 
you know, no one had a crazy, crazy game. So you look at Aiton's though, and I think I'm, I'm with you guys. The 18, 10, and the six assists mm. is solid. Defense needs a whole lot of work. He yeah. gets lost he, a lot of times. He doesn't rotate. That's true. But the offense is, it's already nice. And he really capitalized on a switching defense for the Mavs. As you saw, he scored against Doncic on his first possession. A lot of smaller yep. guys up against him. So, yeah. But take advantage. He's going to score. But take advantage. He's got that ability. It's nice to see a traditional big man back in the rotation. All right, Trey. You're a, you're a Sheck West fan, so uh, what's the Sheck answer West here? Yeah. Uh, well, DeAndre Ayton was better on the court, but now that he's played <laughs> a real NBA game, Mo Bamba is the best name in the NBA. Yeah. So he came out on top for me last night. Anyways, the baller blockers were out in full force last night. Jarrett Allen. Stonewall to Blake Griffin, oh. dunk a tap at the rim, huge. Oh my Mo Bamba, Bamba, tossed a shot into the first row about 30 feet. And for a little variety, Josh Jackson got his chase down on, guys. Who That's has the Josh best Jackson. block? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Allen, Bamba, or Jackson? What you got? Mm. That's Allen. I mean, all the blocks are nice, but... That's, I, yeah. that, Jared Allen's is dirty. That I mean, that's cool. Blake Griffin. I know he's not Blake Griffin of three years ago, but yeah. I but mean, he still. just gets stonewalled. Blake wanted revenge, too. Yeah, because oh. Allen, yeah, like 10 days ago in the preseason, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jared Allen basically <laughs> did this exact same thing to Blake. Yeah. yeah. And so Allen just did it again. Yeah, yeah it has so to be clean, him. too, man. That's so clean. I had him, if you remember, last year as like a super, super dark horse rookie of the year pick. And it's sort of reasons for I don't like remember. This. Yeah, I know, it's just <laughs> forgotten the time. But. What I like about him, he's got like that Alonzo Mourning mentality where he's like, I'm just gonna try and block everything. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna give it a go. I don't yeah. care. He won't. He doesn't. And he's gonna get on some posters this year. There is no doubt. You always do if you always try and challenge shots. But that's great. And yeah. again, it just happened ten days ago with Blake in the preseason. Does yeah. it again? It's Allen. He's gonna have a really long career, but either way, he can say he blocked Blake Griffin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty nastily a couple times. And Mobamba. Uh, it was nice as well. I mean, there was a little flair. Yeah. There was, yeah. I, I'm like, there, there, we got three different type of blocks here, right? We've yeah. Got, yeah. We've got this one. about 30 feet. Yeah. Oof. Jeff Van Gundy probably didn't like it because it went out of bounds. bounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get the possession. Get the yeah. possession back. <laughs> I actually just want to see Josh Jackson's chase down again just to see his new look. Yeah. It took me a while to figure out that this was Josh Jackson. There. Maybe that's why he was so quick. He's more yeah. aerodynamically. Yes. Yeah, uh, just cut the hair. Yeah. That's a nice chase that, down. That's a nice block, yeah, on, on Dennis Smith Jr. there. All right, so you're going Allen, Allen, Allen? Yeah, yeah. Blake Griffin does it for me, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Trey, what's the answer? Oh, I'm with you guys. Right. Allen, 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 Allen. It's going to be a highlight either way, but it was a Jared Allen highlight. That's good. Mm. Uh, Tim Allen or Jared Allen? <laughs> uh, I'm going Jared. I don't know. It's a tough question. <laughs> I do love home improvement. Yeah, that's why <laughs> I, I thought you were a big home improvement fan. All right, when we return, <laughs> the meme team is back. Don't go anywhere. What are they going to bring back home with you? Never. Welcome back to The Starters. Every week, we scour the internet to bring you the meme team, our favorite weird and wacky moments from the NBA universe. Let's get weird and wacky. Al Horford at number five. He loves flinching on free throws. Yeah, he loves weird. doing it. Very weird. He did it on opening night. He just likes to make his teammates laugh, as he said. It gets his guys going. Teammates love flinching. <laughs> Look at that. During that, the play. That was the best. Yeah, during play. He's got it. Last year it was the Hornets rapping Llama Llama Red Pajama. This year we got the Knicks spitting some nursery rhyme bars. This little piggy went to the market. Market! This little piggy stayed home. He stayed home! This little piggy had roast beef. Beef! Yeah. This little piggy had none. Hold on. Zero! Hold on. This little piggy cried, we, 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 all the way home. Home facts. Facts. <laughs> At number three, when Lady Gaga wore an oversized Marc Jacobs suit to L Women in Hollywood event, well, a lot of memes happened. <laughs> the tweet, he, she looks like a member of the O3 draft class. Oh, yes, she does. The split screen with Mello from the O3 draft class. And here she is. <laughs> yeah, she's part of the crew. Yeah. It was in back then. Uh, she looks great. At number two, Clippers center Boban Marjanovic had himself a game on Wednesday night. The seven foot three giant scored 18 <laughs> points in 18 minutes. Yeah, he dunked without jumping on that play. And the captions, oh, me getting a coffee mug from the lowest shelf in my cupboard. Me destroying the neighborhood kids on a six foot goal. <laughs> and uh, channeling Prince here, game, blouses. And he served up some pancakes. At number one, this Kawhi Leonard laugh for a media day. Well, it was heard around the world. <laughs> and it was given the round ball rock treatment. I don't even know where you're sitting at. But... 
That was incredibly done. Yeah, he's a fun guy. It was a fun meme team. When we come back, fun Lily with a very solid play. Don't go anywhere. Oh, it's gonna be in my head all TNT doubleheader tonight, Bulls at 76ers, and then the Lakers in Portland to play the Blazers, LeBron James, Lakers debut. Can't wait for that. All right, we asked you for the next level NBA headwear. You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Trey, you got a few answers. Yeah, Raheel says, I can't wait for the Rockets to start wearing actual astronaut helmets on court. You should be able to match your headwear to your team. Looks cool. Joe says, why wait until you're on the bench to have snacks? <laughs> NBA snack hats. Good luck keeping that popcorn in. But my favorite comes from Marissa, who says, I can't wait to see the court cover with some small helicopter hats. Is that the funniest hat there is? A propeller beanie? <laughs> it's up there. It's up there. It is yeah. comical. Yeah, it's a funny hat. All right, last night's pick em results. Lee takes the L. Close game between yeah. the Nuggets and the Clippers. Clippers led light. Yeah, Denver pulled it out though. So you don't want to get down in this because it's a short month here, mm -hmm. October, mm -hmm. having started halfway through. Oh, nice. Tonight's pick and play, Lakers versus the Blazers. Trey and Lee, like the Lakers and LeBron on the road. Tess and I will take the Blazers at home. Good luck, gentlemen. Lee, Lee, very solid play. Yeah, no Manu, no problemo for the San Antonio Spurs. They're still fizzing the ball around. Here we actually have a boomerang from Patty Mills. Starts off, look at this beautiful ball movement. Bounce pass here, Pow and Bryn going to work. Pow finds Patty in the corner for a... Switch ball. That's what I call a very solid play. Very solid, very that solid start to the air. Now we couldn't find a spot for this elsewhere in the show, so we wanted to squeeze it in here. It's Kawhi Leonard squeezing the ball. Watch how the ball doesn't hit the floor. Kawhi Leonard's hands are monstrous. <laughs> it's like an, an apple. No problem, he just grabs it out of midair. Should be worth Phenomenal. four points. Yeah. Okay. If you catch it, you dunk it. Tomorrow is Friday. We got the Starters Drop Podcast. Get your questions in right now. You can hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Email us, the starters at NBA.com. I'm sure we'll be talking about that Lakers Blazers game and a whole lot more. So that's tomorrow on Friday. Lili, we got, fan sign. we got a fan sign. Fan signs are popping in right now. This is a. Uh, <laughs> Jakob Squirtle. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. What is that, man? That's his Squirtle. handle. Ah, what a great Twitter <laughs> handle. Nice tonight. See you tomorrow, folks. Happy 4 tip coming up next.